Beaver Builder's Page Builder plugin has a best buddy. The Beaver Builder theme. Lightweight, easy to use, and flexible. Beaver Builder themes got it all. This course is all about setting up your site's baseline styles with the Beaver Builder theme. We're talking about fonts, buttons, blog page settings, WooCommerce settings, header styles, footer styles, all the baseline stuff you need to get your project off to a good start. So let's dive into the WordPress customizer with the Beaver Builder theme. Let's install the Beaver Builder theme and Page Builder plugin for WordPress. First, download your theme file, child theme file, and Page Builder plugin file from your Beaver Builder account page. Then head over to your WordPress dash and navigate to your Appearance Themes page. Select Add Themes, then choose and install the zip files that you just downloaded from your Beaver Builder account page, and activate your child theme. Now let's install the Page Builder plugin. From the sidebar of your WordPress dashboard, navigate to Plugin and Add New. Then upload the plugin zip file that we got earlier from your Beaver Builder account page. And don't forget to activate it. You'll need to enter your license key so you can get updates. You'll find your license key back at your account page. And that's it. I've created some content for these courses that I'm making available to you on Assistant Pro. Assistant Pro is a product by Beaver Builder that lets you share and access WordPress assets over a cloud sharing network. And the best way I can explain it is that it's sort of like a Dropbox system built for WordPress. And you can sign up for a free account with Assistant Pro either by visiting assistant.pro or you can follow the link that I've provided in the course, which will prompt you to sign up for a free account if you don't already have one. And once you have set up an account, you can follow that link and it will take you to that same page, but you'll have the option to subscribe or duplicate. So go ahead and duplicate this library. And you'll see now it's saved as one of your Assistant Pro libraries. If you don't have a way to set up a sandbox on your own server, you can utilize the demo sites at wpbeaverbuilder.com. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But the downside to utilizing one of the demo sites is that they get wiped out every 24 hours. So if you can set up your own sandbox, then that's ideal. But I'm just going to work off of one of these demo sites to show you how to import these files. And any of these demo sites will work. So I'm going to navigate to the front end of my site here by clicking Demo Site. And this is the Assistant plugin sidebar. Assistant Pro links up with your sites through a plugin, and you can find that at wordpress.org slash plugin slash assistant, or you can just search for Assistant in the WordPress repository. But the demo sites all have the plugin installed already. All right, so back to the demo site. I'm going to navigate here to what's called the Libraries app, and this will allow me to connect it to the cloud. And once you're logged in, you'll see that library here that I shared, and you can click on it. Now click on this little wrench icon up here, and that's going to give you the opportunity to import the entire library. Now once that's done importing, navigate to the content app. Here's all the blog posts, but I'm not seeing the WooCommerce posts that are part of that library. So I think we're going to go back here to the back end of the site and go to plugins and here we just need to activate WooCommerce. This is going to prompt you to set up your WooCommerce account but just skip that. And now when we return to the front end of our site we'll see our WooCommerce products here. All right now we have all of our course files imported onto our sandbox site. And that's a little quick overview of Assistant Pro, which is a wonderful WordPress plugin and cloud sharing platform built by the Beaver Builder team.
Almost all of our theme setting controls are going to be in the WordPress customizer. And to start out with, there's a bunch of presets to choose from, but we're just going to go with the default preset. So let's start this lesson by stylizing what's already on the screen for the header. The text up at the top where it says Beaver Builder Demo is controlled by the header logo tab. By default, this pulls in information from the site settings, but changing this text will override the site settings. We can use an image instead of text for our logo. In this case, I'm using a 69 by 102 pixel PNG image, which I exported for screens at 72 pixels per inch. And we do have the option to display a high res image on retina screens. I'm just gonna stick with a text logo and I'm gonna change the font to a Matic SC. And all the Beaver Builder fonts are Google fonts. So if you wanna see what they look like, go to fonts.google.com. I'm just gonna make our header text a little bit bigger. And the site tagline is coming in from the site settings. Let's take a quick peek at our site settings to see where the headline is entered. And that's right here under our site identity. There's our updated tagline, but I'll just leave it off. I'll finish stylizing the header logo by making the hover color a bright pink, and I'm gonna make the logo black. I'd like the same color scheme for my menu. The settings for that are under the header style tab. Still in the header tab group, I'm gonna go to nav styles so I can change the menu font. I'd like to use open sans for most of the site. And we'll also change the format. Let's see what it looks like in all caps. I don't really like that. Let's try lowercase. Open Sans does have quite a few variants to choose from, but I'm still just going to stick to normal. Now I'm going to head over to Nav Layout, and I'd like to get rid of the search icon. And while I'm here, I'm going to space out the menu items a little bit. And I'd like to take out some of the padding on the header section. So that's under header layout. By default, the header is sticky and set to fade in. And I'm just going to disable that so that it, it just stays at the top of the page when we scroll. So far we've been working on the header layout, but Beaver Builder also has what's called the top bar layout and that goes above the header layout. So let's set up our top bar layout. The site that I'm working on has WooCommerce installed and I have a menu called Shop Menu set up to display in the top bar. And that's just something I created with some of the default WooCommerce pages like my account and checkout and that kind of thing. Another piece of content that we can add to the nav menu are social icons. And we'll find the social link tab in the general tab group. Only the links to accounts that are filled out are going to display. So in this case, I'm going to do Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and those are the links we're going to see. So let's head back over to our header tab group and we'll set up our top bar layout. By default, the top bar layout's turned off. I'm gonna set it to two columns. In the left icon, I'm gonna show my shop menu. And in the right column, I'm gonna show my social icons. Now I'll stylize the colors to look the same as my header menu. And that's black with hot pink on hover. Great, I think that looks good for the header and top bar layout. Before we end this lesson, let's take a quick look at each tab in the header tab group and also the other tabs that have to do with the header layout and top bar layout. So let's start with the general tab group. 
We didn't talk about this earlier, but the text tab in the general tab group controls the font for the top bar layout. And we'll take a closer look at this tab in another video. Another tab that has to do with the header layout and top bar layout is the social links tab. This is where we set our social links that are now displaying in column two of our nav layout. The header tab group is where most of the settings for the header layout and top bar layout are. So let's take a look at them one by one. The top bar layout tab is where we assigned our menu to display on the left and our social icons to display on the right. And the third option for content to display on our top bar layout is text. We can display our top bar layout as one column or two columns, or we can turn it totally off. The top bar styles tab is where we set the styles for our top bar layout. The header layout is where we reduce the padding on our header. And that's also where we made our header no longer sticky. Header style is where we set the colors to our menu links. Header logo is where we set the size and font of our text logo. And it's also where we set the color and the on hover color. Nav layout is where we spaced out our header menu items. And it's also where the responsive design settings for the header are. Nav style is where we set the font for our header layout and that's also where we set it up to be lowercase. The menus tab is where we set up the menus that we want to display in the header and top bar layouts. On this site, I've set up a menu called main menu that displays in the header layout. And I've set up a menu called shop menu that displays in the top bar layout. Well, I think that should give you a pretty good understanding of Beaver Builders header styles and top bar layout styles. Before we get started, I'm just gonna create a blank page to view in the customizer, just because that will bring the footer up high and make it easy for us to see. In addition to the footer area that we see now, there's also a widget footer area that we'll take a look at a little bit later. But let's start by stylizing and adjusting the content that we see on the page now. So let's start by changing the background color. I'll just make it like a beige color. And I'll change the text to black with pink for the link. And on hover, I'm just gonna make the link get a little bit darker. And the footer layout tab is where we control the content that's displayed in this area. And this works very similarly to the top bar area that we looked at in the header lesson. We can choose a one column layout or a two column layout and we can add text or we can add menus or social media links. And we also have the option to hide this area altogether. To override the default text that's in there, all we have to do is type something into this text field. I'm just gonna put it back as one column with default content. Now let's talk about the footer widgets area. We have the option to show that on all pages or the home page or not show it at all. So how this works is we have to add widgets to the footer area from the widgets tab. We can have up to four columns in the footer widget area. And as we add in the content, then they'll start appearing down there. So let's just fill up all four columns with content so we can see what that looks like. And since you've already seen me do this, I'm just going to fast forward through this section.
We have some stylistic options here too in the widgets tab group under footer widget style. So let's change the background color here. So let's try for something just a little bit lighter than the main footer area down there. And I'll just make this match the other styles that we've set up. Okay, now I'm going to head back to the root menu and to the general tab group, just like the top bar layout. The text in our footer widget area is controlled by the text tab in the general tab group. And the heading links in the footer widget area are controlled using the headings tab, which is also in the general tab group. all about the general aesthetics of your site. So default fonts and link colors and button colors and the default page color and that type of thing. Out of the box, WordPress shows your main post archive as the home page, but I want us to set it up so that it shows a page with some placeholder content on the home page. And that'll help us preview all the stylistic choices we're making. So under the setting tab group, on your customizer. Select the home page setting tab and change that to a static page. And I already have a page set up called home. And I'm also gonna set up a blog post page here. Now when I click the logo link, it's gonna take us to the static home page. We've decided to go with the default preset, but there are some options there. A box layout lets us have a little bit of color on the sides of our page content. And back in the general tab is where we can set that background color if we choose a box layout. I'm not gonna use a box layout though. I tend to gravitate more towards full width layouts. I am going to change the color on the body of the page and that is done using the content tab group under the tab content background. And I picked out a light purple color for the body of my page. I'm gonna take a quick moment to digress before I move on because I just wanna point out that when I demoed the presets for you, my top layout styles got wiped out, my footer styles got wiped out, and my footer widget styles got wiped out. Another thing that happens when you change presets is your additional CSS gets wiped out. In most cases, this won't be an issue, but I just thought I'd point that out and I'm gonna revamp my styles. I'm also going to take a second to go add some buttons to the top of our homepage here because I'd like to have some buttons to demo setting the default button colors for you. Great, now let's head back to the customizer to finish setting up our default styles. All the rest of the adjustments we're going to make are going to be in the general tab group. The first thing we're going to do is change our paragraph text and I'm just going to make this black I'm gonna change the font to Open Sans. And I'll also increase the font size and line height a bit. The next setting I'll make is my link colors and I'm just gonna make those that same hot pink color that I made my links up in my header and footer. And we'll just make it a little bit darker on hover. And 
then you can see those accent colors also control the buttons, but there's also separate button settings that are going to override the accent colors on the buttons. Now when I toggle this to be custom, you'll see that my new custom styles are overriding those accent colors. I don't have anything planned out for my default button styles, so I'll just noodle around until I get something that looks pleasing. I know I want to mostly use open sands. And let's make this semi bold. That looks good. I think I'll add a border, maybe a teal color. I'll do that same trick I like to do a lot where it just gets a little bit darker on hover on the border. I'm not loving how it gets darker when I hover on it. I just want the background to stay the same. So make that black and maybe make the font a little bit smaller. Slim it down a little bit, make the line height smaller. All right, let's move on and stylize our headings now. So I'm gonna change this to open sands and I think I'll make my headings bold. We have different heading controls for up to heading six. I think I'll just do the first two. lesson is all about blog posts, let's go ahead and go back to our settings and change our homepage to display our latest posts instead of a static page. There are three tabs in our content tab group that have to do with our blog posts. Blog layout changes settings for both single blog posts and archive pages. Archive layout changes settings on archive pages and post layout changes settings on single blog posts. Let's start by looking at the blog layout tab and that's the one that has settings for both single blog posts and blog archive pages. These first three settings all have to do with the sidebar. If you wanna put it on the left or right or hide it and if you wanna show it on mobile as well as desktop. We also have the option to turn the sidebar on and off for different types of blog pages. So that turned it off the main blog archive page and we can turn it off the single post page here. This is my author archive page. That'll also turn it off the category archive pages and the search page has an option as well. And I guess the rest of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. If you just toggle it, you can see what it does. Now the archive layout page includes your main blog page as well as your author archives and your category archives. And I think all this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna toggle through the options so that you can see it in action. Let's move on to single blog post settings. Same as the archive settings, these single blog post settings seem pretty self-explanatory, so I'll just toggle around a little bit and we can move on.
Fever Builder theme has a special sidebar built in for WooCommerce pages. And we choose the content that we want to display in that sidebar from the widget page. The widgets page can be navigated to from the appearance tab of your WordPress admin sidebar. Now I'll just drag a couple widgets on here. And there's no save button on this page, it just automatically updates. All right, now let's head over to our customizer. I'm going to navigate to the store page and then we can see the settings change as we adjust them. And some of the stuff is similar to the blog post settings. And none of this is really too involved. I'm just going to kind of noodle around here and you can see what things do. All right, let's move on to the next lesson. There are two spots for entering custom code in the customizer, the code tab group and the additional CSS tab. I think the most common use for the custom code tab is for entering like Google Analytics tracking code. And that just goes right up in the head like this. Additional CSS is where you stick your custom CSS styles. And here's a little code snippet we used for the Beaver Themer lesson. And that little snippet just adds an underline to the link on the menu for our active page. And that's really all there is to it.